And this has been a, a um, hugely interesting and fun event over the past few years. And um, this is going to follow a very similar format where we have three of the companies who've been taking the course at the Guildhall, which is called the Creative Entrepreneurs course. And over the, over, during the progression of a year, um, the various enterprises that are on the course um, look to um, fashion a business or an enterprise that, um, and to strengthen what they're doing and to gain skills to then um, take their initial idea and, or project uh, and take it on to the next level. And so this award is really designed to recognize that and to provide some encouragement and useful feedback and some recognition. Um, I'll just introduce very quickly our panel of judges who very kindly um, uh, uh, agreed to adjudicate the award. Um, we, we we've in the past had two directors, one from each of the VCTs. So this year we have Susanna Nicklin from Amati VCT2 and Peter Lawrence from Amati VCT, who's going to chair the panel this year. Um, Anne Cottis has returned. Uh, you'll you'll recognise her from previous years uh, if you've been to the award before. Um, she, Anne has huge a huge amount of experience with businesses, having um, had a long career at PwC and also also been involved in mentoring um, small companies. And um, uh, the fourth member of the panel is Rafael Todes, who is a violinist who briefly was with me in the city of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra many years ago and uh, is um, currently a member of the Allegri String Quartet. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Vox Integra to make the first presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Teresa Goebel. I'm a mezzo-soprano and actually studied here at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama and then completed my training at the National Opera Studio. While still at the National Opera Studio, I was invited to join the staff of the Guildhall and have been a professor here for the last 26 years, as well as enjoying a parallel career as a performer in opera and on the concert platform. In my capacity as a professor at the Guildhall, along with a colleague, I'm currently devising a new teaching skills module within the BMUS4 program. My business partner, Soprano Morag McLaren, also trained as an opera singer, and after a varied and diverse career now directs and specializes in devising a range of bespoke workshops for singers, as well as directing small-scale opera companies and creating opportunities for emerging young artists in her capacity as patron of the Froome Festival and artistic director of the Cooper Hall Foundation. Katerina Chani is the latest addition to our team and has worked for over 20 years in the international performing arts sector, leading projects for Carnegie Hall, the Juilliard School, the American Museum of Natural History, and Harmon Carden Learn How to Listen, amongst many others. In 2012, she was nominated as a European Commission culture expert and is currently concert manager for the Klosters Music Festival in Switzerland. Together, we formed Vox Integra in 2012 because through our work, myself as a voice teacher and Morag as a vocal facilitator and workshop leader, identified that some sort of bridge was needed to help singers move both into conservatoire and also from their formal training into professional employment. And that in order to be employable, singers required assistance with integrating the sophisticated skills their training had given them. In 2016, the National Opera Studio felt the need to commission a wide-ranging survey on opera training in the UK to examine how training could adapt for the evolving profession and act as a catalyst for change. The results called for collaborative action with a focus on the key underlying principles of reach, relevance, and resilience all of which chime with the ethos, aims, and objectives of Vox Integra. Constant evaluation and assessment of those aims and objectives, our ability to be creative, 
and innovative in approach, as well as our breadth of professional experience, gives us the tools and drive us to attend to the changing demands of the profession. Our vision and mission reflect this. In aiming to be the best, we aspire to help ensure a healthy future for opera and the vocal arts at a time when there are ever more challenges and less work. We believe the best way to do this is by offering short, specialized, affordable niche bespoke courses that aim to make singers appropriately prepared, open to direction, good team players, and that foster in them an entrepreneurial spirit towards their individual career path. How do we implement these goals? Drawing from our extensive and varied experience as performers, educators, producers, innovators, and collaborators, we design courses that expose and explore the transferable core skills essential to being a professional singer. The ensemble workshop is central to our work and is incorporated into every course. It fosters and promotes responsibility, support, how to communicate, and be a good company member, as well as a leader. Our small group policy provides quality one-to-one -one individual attention on personal development, technique, choices in musical style, and suitable repertoire. The process culminates in masterclass sessions, which have an emphasis of pulling all the threads together and putting the work on its feet. Our course on how to audition prepares singers to get jobs. Due to the success of our audition courses, we are able to run two this year, one for undergraduate level and the other for postgraduate professional level. Role development teaches singers how to do the job, prepare, shape, pace, own and inhabit the role, how to take direction, and examines how the rehearsal process evolves. Our courses so far have been filled by our reputation and word of mouth. We have many returning customers, and our proven success is that many students have gained places at conservatoire, received scholarships, and employment as a result of doing our courses. Through our collaboration with Cooper Hall, we have been able to provide performing opportunities and paid employment in small-scale productions, celebrity masterclasses, and the Cooper Hall Opera Club. Part of our mission is to run courses in inspirational environments that are conducive to learning, thereby giving participants a broader learning experience. For example, next week we'll be running our third French repertoire course in Alsace, which has expanded from a small venue in Isenheim to Maison Clébach, a unique haven in the heart of Alsace, specially equipped to meet the needs of all musicians. Furthermore, we're very excited about the success of a pilot Italian Aria weekend course um, that took place in the hills of Florence this spring. Um, in fact, uh, Caruso's mistress's villa. Next year, as well as our Italian taster, sorry, and, uh, in Florence, plans are well underway for a staged scenes weekend in Cortina d'Ampezzo in the Dolomites. In autumn 2016, we piloted our own first interactive Vox Angel scheme in collaboration with the Cooper Hall Foundation. This particular scheme invites sponsors with an interest in the vocal arts to invest in the future of a young singer by funding a year of Vox courses for an emerging artist. The upfront cost of this for 2018 is 2,320. We would welcome more Vox Angels. Our first Vox Angel recipient, Erin Alexander, was able to attend this year's courses, was given performing opportunities with the Cooper Hall Emerging Artist Workshop, and is currently being mentored by Morag on the concept and creative development of a one-woman show to be previewed at Cooper Hall in January. And from a concert that she gave at Cooper Hall, she has also gained an agent for when she leaves 
um, the Welsh College in September. At this point, we see it as critical to increase the number and range of our courses to establish stability, reach more students, and generate a smoother cash flow. Positive feedback we're receiving is validating the work we do and encouraging us to have the confidence to expand. This year, we've begun putting initial expansion initiatives in place by increasing our specialist team of professional practitioners to include Greg Eldridge, staff director at the Royal Opera House, who led masterclasses at our role development course, sharing not only his expertise, but carving links with the profession. Brian Parsons, international tenor, French repertoire and language specialist, who will be joining us for the first time in Alsace next week. Beverly Warboys, an alumna of the Guildhall, now based in Switzerland, has carved out an international career as a performer in opera and musical theatre, as a workshop leader, movement specialist, and producer. We have also increased our pool of repetiteurs and appointed Jessica Friend to utilize social media routes to enhance our online profile and advertise more widely. On the business side, in order to maintain financial viability, sustainability, and scalability, our goal is also to develop a strong and solid long-term internet strategy in order to ultimately increase visibility, extend our reach, and eventually diversify income streams. We will do that by aiming to make Vox Integra website the go-to site for singers in the UK, Europe, and worldwide. Our strategy will include developing exclusive high-quality content through blogs and articles to be shared on the site and on the internet, creating short mini-courses online that will be teasers for our courses and will allow singers and future clients to get a small glimpse into the world of Vox Integra and its tutors. Creating a membership area, thereby creating a community online whereby singers can exchange information, get support, discuss ideas, etc. <coughs> Explore possibilities co of collaborating with businesses already in place, such as Audition Oracle, in order to set a forum of cross-pollination to exchange and share useful and valuable information. All of this is meant to generate interest and drive traffic to the site. The paid membership area will provide a revenue stream, and the idea is to create demand so that we can fill our courses easily and eventually, as demand rises, raise our prices. Other ideas for raising money include organizing a yearly fundraiser with an inaugural concert at Cooper Hall, which would generate funds for Vox and give our young singers the opportunity to perform. I'm going to conclude this presentation by quoting from the National Opera Survey I mentioned earlier. It is the right time for those who care about the future of opera, its stewardship, and its evolution to be working together and asking what we can all do to ensure its ongoing resilience, relevance, and success. We at Vox are passionate about rising to the challenge. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very interesting. Um, question. I, I've, I've clearly, I've read the um, plan that you sent us. What I can't quite make out is, is this a hobby, part-time thing that you're doing, or are you going to want to make it a full-time <laughs> career and create this into a business that will support the three of you? Well, there, I don't there, think that was clear from right. what I read. There are more than three of us. I think we want to create a proper business that can go forward because we're passionate about education. Um, musicians, well, we used to be called itinerant, 
and now we're um, entrepreneurial. But most musicians of any degree, I'm lucky in that I you know, was invited to join the Guildhall so early, but have what we call a portfolio career. And a lot of that is making uh, the, up the work that you do. And I have a private practice of singers. Everything in a way, um, it does cross-pollinate. So I think it's perfectly possible, and that would be my dream, and I think, you know, more acts to make this into a sustainable business. But, um, and we've learned along the way, I, and it was certainly easier for me to sing an aria than do this in the beginning, but I just felt <laughs> passionate about it. I think we all do lots of things, but that's what we bring to this project. So none of us would want to be giving up the other things that we do because that, these are the threads that we're pulling together. But Teresa is driving this. She is in the main driving seat, and Teresa can make it your mm. own job. You know, we have other things that we're doing, mm. but you've developed mm. a team where it would, we think it would be possible. Because if, 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 one, if one didn't still have those strands of other things that you would do, you wouldn't be able to bring to something like this, it's what, it, what it needs, its relevance, the ongoing changing nature of the business always. And to be up to date with everything, you have to, you have to be having, and you know, even most conservatoires now, if you go in as a professor, will ask, what, what can you bring? You know, could, do you have contacts you know, in other, because it's all kind of cross-pollinating and it's a wonderful, uh, Thing to happen in the same way that for the Guild Hall to be so supportive and to give us this opportunity has been fantastic and has really you know helped up our profile and as well as what we can bring to it individually. Thank you. Can I ask? Um, I uh, Benedetti did a master class um, recently at the Royal Academy and. They put it on Facebook Live and got 38,000 people watching it. Isn't that is that a strand that you could sort of you you could you could use sort of online masterclasses, where you get your name about in terms of what you're doing? Yes, certainly. And I think you know the the, the bigger the sort of celebrity or the building up of the following, then of course yes. I mean it's fantastic, uh, you know, forum to have. I mean th yeah. I think Katerina, who's um, I think it's a great idea. It's something that you have to do very carefully because right. you want to make sure that everybody's okay with it. Sometimes, especially in these courses that I've seen, you know, people are pushed out of their comfort zone, let's say, to Brutally say the massacred. least. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have to be careful. I would be careful to do something live. Um, I, I would put something maybe on afterwards that's edited just to make sure. But then again, if everybody agrees, then yes, of course, it's a great way right. to... to to create visibility and uh, yeah. Uh, now, generally, if it's somebody like, you know, in th the thing about workshops is that you're, you're in an environment where you're safe to explore yeah. and take chances and risks that out of context may look a little bit, <laughs> you well, know, I mean, I unusual. I'm the person that leads the workshops. I wouldn't put certainly the first section of my workshop online. Mm -hmm. I, I have to nurture the group that I have. They have to feel safe. I, I wouldn't consider that. But a masterclass is a different thing. Mm. Right. Masterclass is an element of audience to a masterclass. Yeah. A workshop is the group. Mm. But what a, to look at a cut down version of that, I mean, there's a lot that you could share very, very widely Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, to a huge audience of people, and which eventually bring, brings in people from afar. Yes. I mean, would you teach online? Yes, uh, that's something, well, because I have various clients that are all over the world, and uh, I mean, I still think it's better to be one-to-one sure. -one in situ, but yes, certainly people will check in and say, oh, I'm not sure about this, or that note wasn't right, or, so absolutely, again, it's, it's, it's just, um, I think for us old, well, me and Morag, certainly, it's just uh, dispensing with that uh, fear of all these things that are internet and, and getting into it, and it, yes, it works very well, it works in all sorts of ways that are very useful. So yes, yeah, Skype lessons are something, and also what we said about the taster mm -hmm. things to, to give to people. Yeah, is, uh, I, mean, I think if we can embrace the technology, not be too scared about it and do it intelligently, we can really grow the business. Um, and we can also tailor what information we want to put out there and what information we want to keep to ourselves, because obviously 
you've also got some intellectual property that maybe we want to share only with somebody one on one or um, yeah, that's yeah. That's a very but good point. that's part of the strategy is to is to embrace the technology and to use that aspect of it to be able to grow. Can I just ask a quick question? You've been around for five years. What's the couple of key things you've learned that's helping you take this business forward? But key. we're nearly running out of time. So. <laughs> key things we, um, I think it's to be open to be able to respond to what's presented to you rather than you just present something. And it's that thing, it's to be open to listen to what people say. To, and that's the same, so it's like taking teaching on a, on a bigger scale. It's, it's not about what you know, it's how you apply it. And then being responsive and caring to what people actually then and for present me, to you. And it's about being, ex being able to be experimental a classical training can seem very formal and can feel like it's blocking you in. And in fact, that's, as a performer myself, once I was able to let go of that, everything slotted into place. And I was so much freer and able to be a better performer that that, and I've, I've had a lot of opportunities to use improvisation in the process. That's why for me, I think that's what I bring is that sort of playfulness to this very formal training. Thank you. Mm. Thank you very much. Uh, very Thank interesting. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. One final question. How, what would the Amati grant allow you to do that you would otherwise not be allowed, able to do? Well, our biggest outlay at the minute is in order to, to be able to present a year of courses. What we have to do is we have a lot of upfront costs in terms of booking venues. We have a, 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 we're lucky in that we have, we've developed a, a relationship with the National Opera Studio because I'm an a, alumna of that, so we get a little bit of discount, but that's still, if one's setting three, four, five courses, that's a lot of money that's tied up, and then that means you don't have the money for other things. So um, that amount that amount, if we had that, that, I mean, there are just a million things that I could think of doing with it, but that would really enable us to be able to roll out the year's program with certainty. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.